Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In this demo, we are going to extract key value pairs and update it into a SharePoint column. The whole idea of extracting key value pairs and updating it in a SharePoint column would be to increase searchability. Secondly, we can go ahead and categorize the data and further process it. For this demo, you see a invoice on the screen. From this invoice, I want to extract meaningful data. For this particular demo, let's say that I want to extract the invoice number and the email address and update it into a SharePoint column here. I have three invoices, but I don't have the columns yet. So let me go ahead and create the column. So the first column would be the email and the second column would be the invoice number. So I just take it as text column for now. Perfect. Now that we have the email and the text column set up, I want to loop through all the files and extract the key value pairs. So I'll go and create a new flow. For this, I'm going to create an instant flow because it's a one-time activity. If you are doing it in an automated format, be careful such that your flow does not go into an infinite loop. That being said, the first step would be to get all the files. So I'll add an action. I'll type in SharePoint and I'll search for get files action. Perfect. So I have got the get files action. I'll provide it a site collection URL. So it's going to be demo converter KVP demo. Now that I have the files, the next step would be to get the file content. And here I will pass in the identifier, which is the output of the get files action. Now that I have the files, and the file content, the next step would be to get the key value pairs. So to get the key value pairs, what I'm going to do out here is I'm going to use the Mohembi action. So the action is extract key value pairs. To this, I will give a file name. So the file name with extension, the output of the get files action and the file content, which will be the output of the action above it. Here you see that you have got a number of configurations, including OCR, DPI. What output format do you want your KVP to be in? JSON, CSV, XML. This means that it returns a file. You can write the file back into a particular data source and then process it. Or I'll show you a way in which you can pass the JSON and update it on the fly. The additional configurations would be if the pages are rotated, auto-rotated, include a confidence, include a bounding box, etc., etc. What I'm going to do out here is I'm going to add an action base64 to string, right? So base64 to string. And I will pass it dynamic content. That is the processed file content out here. I'll save it and I'll start testing it. Perfect. So now let's look at the output and now the output looks good. Let me copy the output into a notepad and paste it in out here. So here you see that there's a lot of data. As I told you, we are interested in two, right? We are interested in first the email. So let me search for the email. Yes, the email address is something that we are interested in. And we are also interested in the invoice number. So let me search for the invoice. Yes, the invoice number is also there. There is a lot of data out here. Let's try to understand the data. First and foremost, you have the bounding box. It means that it creates a box around the data on a particular area in the PDF. Secondly, it tells you on which page it is. If your invoices are only in the first page or if you want to extract the invoices, um, the data only from the first page, we can configure that. We also see something known as the confidence. It tells me that it is 100% confident. It also gives me the number type. But this is a lot of data and we are just interested in two. So how do I go ahead and fine tune it? So fine tuning would be, I would say, I don't want 
to have the bounding box included, that's fine. I sh the page numbers do not include it, that's also fine. Do not include the type. And the minimum would be 50%, so that is right. So page range, only the first page. Uh, next, what I want to do, I want to go ahead and not include the confidence as well. In addition to that, now when I go ahead and run this flow, you will see that the flow is pretty, um, the output would be pretty small and it would be pretty precise because it does not have these additional values. So let me go and test it again. Perfect. Now if I copy the output, you look at this output versus, okay, that's not what I wanted. So let me copy it. So I need to copy the output in the compose. So I will go back and paste the output of the compose. If you see, it's quite nice and it is quite, you know, structured. Now, if we want to fine tune it further and if we just want to have something like the email and the invoice, what we can do is we can remove these out here you need to keep the invoice, so we'll keep the invoice. So I'll remove these key value pairs from here. Also remove the total. And I'll pass in only this data. So this will help us get the precise values only. So we can also pass in something known as a template. So I'll click on show all and expected keys, I'll just pass in these keys, right? At this point, I can click on save and now look at the output again. Perfect. So let me again go to the compose, copy the output. In fact, let's copy the output on number three, right? I'll copy the output on number three. This was the output that we were expecting and if you see number three we get this output so isn't that awesome now you have fine-tuned the data by passing it a template as well now that you have this configured the next step would be to go ahead and write the data into your SharePoint right so for that we want to go ahead and initialize two variables so the first variable would be the invoice just go ahead and put it as text. I'll also say invoice variable, just that we understand it better. Another variable I would add, initialize variable, email variable, string, perfect. So we have two variables. Now what we need to do is we need to parse the JSON first. So I'll parse the JSON. So parse JSON. JSON, I can go ahead and pass it the output of the compose because it's already formatted correctly, base64 to string. And then I need to pass in the schema. The schema is something that I can use from the output that I copied previously. So what I'm going to do, I'll say use sample payload and use this as a payload, right? So I have parsed the JSON. At this point, what I can do is I want to extract key value pairs. So one option would be to use a switch. So switch statement to the switch, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, so I'll click on the switch, right? And I'm going to choose a value. The value would be the output of the parse JSON, right? The parse JSON action. That's going to be the key. I'm going to bifurcate the data based on the key. It automatically applies and apply to each loop. Within the key, now I can go ahead and add cases. The first case that I'm going to add is going to be if the key equals to hash. Okay, hash means the email in our 
or the pound symbol out here is equal to this, we will set the data. So case one is fine and I'm going to set the variable. So set variable and this variable will be the email and I'll set the value out here. So the value that I'm going to set is click here say body value right perfect so I have set the value out here and it will map itself so that's awesome and the second case that I'm going to add is is and the second case that I'm going to add is the invoice out here so invoice hash symbol and then I will set the variable so set variable this would be invoice and again map it with the body value perfect right now that I have set the values the next step would be outside the first apply to each loop or outside the for each loop one okay so the for each loop one is still here i'm going to update the file properties so the files are already there so i'll say update file which will be a sharepoint action it should be update file properties by the way so delete this add the action again let's select the library pass in a unique identifier Perfect. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass in the title. So let's say the title is the title, which was the output of the get file. So title, title, that's fine. But the email would be the email variable. The invoice would be the invoice variable. The description would again be the description, which is the output of the get files properties action. So this is how your flow would look. I'm going to save my flow and test my flow if I get the correct output. Fingers crossed. I'm going to test it manually and run my flow. Perfect, so my flow ran successfully. If I refresh this, I see the output out here. The output, let's go ahead and compare the output. So I'll just open it in the browser. And this had invoice number one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The email address was Jack. That's awesome. Jack has been added. So here, my friends, we have successfully tagged extracted let's go ahead and put it this way so here my friends i have successfully extracted the metadata from the invoice and added it to the sharepoint column in addition to that we also took a deep dive and looked at the key extract key value pairs mohembi action i have also went ahead and showed you how to use the switch statement in this context, the switch statement is very, very important. So we use the switch statement to extract key value pairs and finally updated it into a column. Thank you. Have a great day and bye-bye.